Um, the next item of your worship is we have Glenn Newfelt, who's the senior appraiser with BC Assessment Authority, to provide council with an overview of the 2012 property assessments. Glenn, if you'd like to come forward, please. And if you see us crying, it's not because our assessments were too high. This was just a really hard announcement. Uh, good afternoon, uh, your, work, your lordship and council members and attendees in the audience. Uh, before I get into the presentation, I just want to introduce you, um, Deputy Assessor for our office, uh, John Green. John. So, um, what I'd like to um, first say is that um, the presentation is kind of broken up into four um, sections. And after the presentation, um, you may have a number of questions that you have for me, and I will be happy to answer them after that time, after I've completed the, the presentation. So, um, and if I'm unable to answer the question uh, today, I would have no problem um, getting back to you uh, in the next day or so, uh, either by v uh, email or by, uh, by phone. So just want to say thank you on behalf of BC Assessment for uh, allowing us to speak this afternoon. Um, the agenda that I was looking at uh, doing is um, what does BC, BC, BC Assessment do? <clears throat> what market movements have been seen to establish the 2012 assessment role? Non-market change and the relationship between the assessment and taxation. So BC assessment's role in taxation consists of overall valuation, classification, applying the necessary exemptions to the assessment, including federal, provincial, municipal, uh, and permissive exemptions. We also maintain ownership and address, address changes. And throughout the year, um, your department and our department share information back and forth so that your information is up to date as, as much as possible in regards to um, correct ownership and any addresses changes that, that come through the year. Um, in regards to, um, and one last thing is subdivisions and new construction. So anytime um, approvals come through in regards to permits, or land developments, we take that information and we update our records based upon what is being developed out there and all the new construction. Two important and legislative dates that we consider when establishing the assessment role are July 1st, our valuation date, and October 31st, <coughs> the physical condition. For majority of properties that are assessed, the, va the assessed value is their market value. Market value is defined as the most probable price which a property should be in a competitive market under all conditions, requisite to a fair sale, the buyer and seller, each acting prudently, knowledgeably, and assuming the price is not affected by undue stimulus. BC Assessments professional appraisers analyze market transactions throughout the year and apply increases and decreases en masse depending on the uses of those properties. Some pertinent factors that we consider are location, age, condition, style, land size, and selling price. There are also a number of properties that are not assessed at market value. <coughs> they are continuous structures, MIPS, which is uh, major industrial properties, farms, and properties that qualify for Section 198. Uh, just on a uh, summary of those, con 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 continuous structures are train tracks, power lines, fiber optics. Typically, these are assessed based upon legislative rates. Um, MIPS, or major industrial properties, um, they're assessed based on 
rates that are recommended by BCA and are forwarded to cabinet for approval. They would also be considered legislative rates. Farms, for the assessment purpose, a farm typically is a property that meets the annual income requirement. For properties between two and 10 acres, $2,500. Under two acres, it's 10,000. Legislation in the last few years has allowed properties to be classified at any time during the calendar year. What this means to you is that the rural values are at risk as we may have to issue supplementary assessments to grant farm class. Typically 30 to 40 percent of, of properties removed from farm class for the completed role are put back into farm class for the revised role or through supplementary assessments. Properties that qualify for section 198, typically these properties are assessed less than their market value where that market value is based upon a higher and better <coughs> use. To qualify, a number of requirements have to be met. They have to live on the property for more than 10 years and occupy that residence and the parcel has to be less than 5.02 acres. Properties that fall under classification as farms and section 198, these properties are two ways where average property owners can reduce their assessment. There are nine classes of properties and properties can also be classified as a, under a split classification. classification. Qualifications for each class comes, on, comes from the prescribed classes of property regulation, BC Reg 438-81. Not all properties are clearly prescri prescribed based upon their use. Therefore, case law where decisions are rendered for properties appealed on the basis of classification help us to interpret this regulation. Approximately 30,500 properties were assessed in Chilliwack for the 2012 rule. 12, 2012 rule. Approximately 90% of your assessment rule is in the residential classification, with the remaining being mostly in class nine farm and class six, which is business and other. Sorry, I just want to, uh, yeah, so we have class one residential, class two is re utilities, three is supportive housing, class four is major industrial, class five and six pretty well considers of major, um, major industrial, class five is light industrial, class six business and other, seven managed forest and land, eight is recreation non-profit, profit, and class nine is farm. <clears throat> Another job we do is the application of exemptions against property assessments. A majority of these come from the community charter. Statutory exemptions covering things like hospitals, public schools, and places of public worship. Permissive exemptions are approved by taxing jurisdi jurisdictions like yourselves and cover things like land around churches, athletic and service club parks, land owned by other municipalities and or regional districts. Revitalization, each taxing, taxing jurisdiction has their own bylaws and each works little differently than, than others. This exemption provides a tax incentive for development. It allows the increase in value from the year before construction begins to the year the certificate is issued to be exempt for a period of time. In some cases, it's the total amount. In others, it's a sliding scale. Of course, it's a huge incentive to attract new construction. The sooner you have your exemption bylaw in place, please forward it to us like you have in the, in the past, even though it's um, before the October 31st. The sooner the information comes to us, the sooner we can apply it to the exemptions or to the assessments. School Act covers 50% of exemption for farmland and land in the ALR. Also, no, also now has previously discussed a 60% exemption for class four and five properties on school taxes.
<clears throat> now that I've touched on what we do, I would like to direct you to the market movement for the Chilliwack area. The slide provides you with a typical value change for the five main categories of properties. Some properties may have experienced increases and decreases greater than the ones shown. As you can see, the industrial properties have increased considerably more in relation to other properties. Smaller warehouses have increased approximately 15%, with the larger warehouses have actually overall decreased by 5%. The slide that's in front of you right now provides two examples of properties uh, in the residential classification. Uh, as you can see here, we are within um, three to five percent plus or minus of last year's value. Um, the first property is located in Promontory, the second one is located in Sardis. Newfeld, 10 yeah. minutes goes by really quickly and yes. you're at 10, yes. so yeah. if you want to take another two, that would be great. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this, this slide here pr presents um, the commercial industrial uh, values in the, in the changes that we have seen. Hot spots, uh, shopping centers, strip malls and banks were reassessed this year. Values were increased by varying, de varying degrees. Typically what we are looking at um, for total value change is uh, in total market value is from 10.24 billion to 10.32 billion. And this is based upon net general next ta taxable values. Estimating all market change for this year, um, what we are looking at is a five year trend where back in 2008, 2009, we had non market change in over 400 million dollars 2010 we had seen a significant <coughs> drop in the non-market change this year it's gone up by approximately 50,000 and a slight drop in 2012. I do have the exact numbers if anybody wants them um, I can <coughs> give to you later on. Relationship between assessment and taxes the last item I like to discuss is is how are assessments if over a period of time the change that has taken place from from uh, one year to the next and how it relates to t taxation. As the assessment function is an integral and important part of the overall taxation process, it is only one piece of the tax equation. The biggest role the assessment plays is, is to ensure equity and or fairness. Property properties with similar values pay similar amounts of taxes. Properties with higher values pay more. Despite fluctuations in value, taxes normalize over time. If the assessment function continues to do what is meant to do assessment and therefore taxes will be distributed fairly. Last slide here is I just want to pro provide you with a number of um, areas where we have um, provided information to homeowners, fact sheets, EvaluBC. Our website is there. Um, I would ask you to if you have any questions to um, look at, at this uh, website. There's a lot of information there. And of course, owners may access our website uh, any time of the day um, to compare their assessments online via EVIUBC. Again, thank you for your time, and I would be open to questions. Terrific. Thank you. Thank and you. first of all, just to staff, uh, could that be put up on our website as well, just so if people have questions about their assessments? It might already be there. Is it? We'll look after that. Great. Terrific. Uh, members of council, do you have any questions? Well, I'll get you just to stay there, Mr. Sure. Neufeld, for a minute. I'm going to put you on the spot, uh, Director Crossman. Uh, just because right now, um, as people are starting to look at their assessments, they're really concerned about whether if their assessments have gone way up, whether their taxes will go way up. And it's one of the questions I get most often. So if you could please talk about uh, how we actually, what effect this would have on uh, an average homeowner, would that, that would be helpful. Thank you. Uh, your Worship, if your uh, in increase is similar or your decrease is similar to the range that was identified, 
uh, then your taxes should be similar to last year with the exception of a uh, um, an inflationary increase which uh, each year council will put on. Uh, municipalities adjust away the effect of, of assessment change on the overall level. So if the overall assessments go down a bit, then um, the tax rates are, are, are changed so that people pay the same from year to year. And, and, and as you alluded to, uh, the only exception will be if somebody uh, changes at a, at a great, great deal different than, than the, uh, the standard amount. And so if, if yours is changing at, a, at, a, at an amount quite differently than, than the normal range, uh, you might want to ask BC Assessment for a little bit more information on, on why that was, just to make sure it's, it's accurate. Um, so. Thank you, that's a great explanation. I think um, as well people in our community feel that if their assessments, w well, as a city, if all the assessments went up, it would somehow be a windfall to the city and we'd be able to put our taxes way up there and get a whole bunch of money from them, but uh, that's not the way it works. No. Thanks. Um, Councilor hey, Lum. I do have a question, thank you, Worship. Um, in, in regard to our property assessment values in comparison to um, our neighbors to the west and back into Metro Vancouver, how do our assessed values relative to percentage change um, compare? Um, Council, um, what we have to look at is, is a couple things. In regards to um, market value, what we have seen in the Chilliwack area and also in the Abbotsford area, um, going east, you're, we're, we are pretty well looking at a, a stable market right through. Uh, and that was consistent right from January, February uh, sales to current sales. In relation to the Vancouver market, of course, you know, you have the, the Asian market that is really playing a part in there and we're seeing double digit increases there. And that's just based upon what I've seen in, and read in the paper. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? The none then thank you, uh, Mr. Thank you for, your time. for coming. Thank you so much, Mr. Green, for joining him. And uh, don't feel that you have to stay for the rest of the meeting. Thank you very nice much. Nice to meet you all. Have a good yeah, day. You bet. So motion to receive was moved by Councillor Attrell, seconded by Councillor Lum. All those in favor, oppose the motion.